We are here today for a historic event, which is the unveiling of the Robert Rhodes headstone back in the Ellesmere Cemetery. So what I want to do today is briefly tell you a story of why this headstone is here. I'll ask Greg Howard to say a few words on behalf of Dorset Council, and then we will ask Leslie Cox and Peter McLennan together to take the wraps off of headstone. If you haven't located it already, it's the little one down there with a little black hat on at the moment. So let me tell you a story. In the 1830s, there were very, very few people in the Dorset area. There were a few properties along the coast, and one of those was Bowood at Bridport. Now, in the 1830s, Peter Brewer from Bowood went to a native encampment and found a white person. Now, he discovered that that white person was a man by the name of Robert Rhodes, who was a man in his 30s. And he discovered that Robert Rhodes was an American. And he'd been in the US Navy, we think. And we're not sure how he ended up there, but he came off a ship. So a sealing boat or a whaling boat or something. But he ended up in a native encampment in Dorset in Tasmania. Now, Peter Brewer discovered that Robert Rhodes was a stonemason. So in the late 1830s, Peter Brewer used Robert Rhodes as the stonemason and a man called Edwards as the carpenter, and the two of those built Bowood. Now, he must have been a pretty good stonemason because Bowood is a very attractive property and it's still standing to this day. So that's a testament to Robert Rhodes. So let's move on 20 years to 1859. We are standing right here in 1859 it's thick forest. The European settlers haven't arrived yet. They're just about to come from the road from Bridport. It's not really a road at all. There's no one here. The first person arrives, Thomas Cox, with his family, his wife Alice, his son Thomas, and we're not sure, but at least two of his daughters. So they come here in 1859, and Thomas Cox has 200 acres. His 200 acres starts at the creek, which is now known as Cox's Creek or Cox's Rivulet, and runs just down to the other end of the cemetery and goes back that way for 200 acres. So that's 1859. Other people start arriving around the same time, but Thomas Cox is the first. And Leslie's here today as a direct descendant of the Thomas Cox family. Thomas Cox in 1863 donates one acre of his land in order to build a Union Chapel. So we've got people living down the Jetsonville area, we've got people living in the Ellesmere Scottsdale area, Different religions, but you build one chapel, a small wooden building, on the one acre that Thomas Cox um, donated. Now, where this big rock is here, if you haven't seen it already, on the other side of that rock, there is a little plaque that marks the site of the Union Chapel. Exactly where it was, we don't know, but it was on the hill within the one acre that Thomas Cox donated. So you have this little wooden building somewhere around here where the locals came for religious observance. Then in October 1863, so within the same year that Thomas Cox donated this one acre of land, Robert Rhodes dies at Bridport. And so he is buried here. The first ever burial in the one acre that Thomas Cox donated. And I've got a quote here from A.W. Loon, the man who wrote the first history book in 1928. So he wrote this in 1923, 60 years after the Union Chapel was first built. A.W. Loon lived down the road here, and he 
came to this area with his parents. He was born in 1857. So in 1863, when Robert Rhodes was buried, A.W. Loon was six years old. So when he was 60 years old, he wrote this. We were the 20th family to take up our residence in the district. There was a road to our place from Jetsonville, and from there a dray track cut through the bush up to Tucker's Corners, which is the present Scottsdale. The bulk of the residents were situated then around Jetsonville and included Thomas and James Campbell, Dougal McGilp, James Shearer, Joseph Bald, John McBean, John Cunningham, Alexander Farquhar, George Tyson, Thomas Cox, William James, William Smith, Edward Bonser, Thomas Diprose, T.D. Hazelwood, Thomas Tucker, Alexander Gill, the Reverend Harris, and John Williams, and the Brewers of Bowood. Robert Rhodes was the first man buried in the district. I wasn't at his funeral, but I saw it pass along. So there's A.W. Um, Loon, a six-year-old boy, living down the road, actually saw the procession, it would have been a fairly small one, I suspect, as Robert Rhodes' body was brought from Bridport to here. I just think that's an amazing thing. So That's Robert Rhodes. So a chapel's around here, and Robert Rhodes is buried just down there. There weren't too many burials in the cemetery in the early days. So Robert Rhodes was 1863. Jessie Crabtree was the next person buried. She was 46 years of age, also from Bridport. She was buried the following year in 1864, and then nobody is buried for the next couple of years, and then in 1866 we have two young children buried in this um, cemetery. So it's not as if there are a lot of people around in the early days, and it's not as if there are a lot of people buried here. So let's talk about what happened to this cemetery. Thomas Cox was late 50s when he arrived here. He was not a young man. Most of the people who came to the early area were young men, but Thomas Cox wasn't. He was a miller in Launceston. His thought was this area was going to take off. He would have a mill down on Cox's Creek and would process the crops for locals. His son, sadly, Thomas Cox Jr., died in 1876. He was only 39 years of age and he was the 17th person buried in the cemetery. Must be hard to donate some land and then have to bury your own son in that cemetery. Thomas Cox's wife, Alice, died in 1883. She was the 34th person buried in the cemetery and then Thomas Cox himself died five weeks after his wife. He was 84 years of age, a decent age, and he is the 35th person buried in the cemetery. And the headstones have gone, but there's a memorial to the Coxes over on the fence over there. Now, what happened was this cemetery fell into disrepair. So after Thomas Cox died, they appointed trustees to run the cemetery. Apparently, it was never fenced. You can imagine the big old trees that were all around the Scottsdale district fell down occasionally, crushed headstones and graves and things. There are stories of terrible neglect where horses and cattle were running through the cemetery, and you can imagine with some of these how a horse or a cow could easily put their foot through, knock down headstones and so on. So from the old part of the cemetery, we are missing so many of the original headstones. Now, what happened was, over a hundred years ago, but we don't know exactly when, the Brewer family from Bowood decided that Robert Rhodes' headstone was at risk. So they took it from here back to Bowood. So it was only in this cemetery for about 40 or 50 years 
and then it's been at Bowood for the last hundred plus years. So they took it back to Bowood and that's where it's been ever since. Until Jeff Jennings talked to Shirley Brewer in the 1980s and Shirley told Jeff this story. And Shirley, incredibly, is still alive today in Launceston at 102 years of age. Obviously couldn't make it today, but she did send her best wishes. Just recently, I might get Jeff to tell this little bit of the story, but Jeff had this thought that I wonder if Robert Rhodes' headstone is still at Bowood. Went out to Bowood, talked to Adam, and yes, they know perfectly where it is. So in some ways it was never a secret. The people at Bowood always knew it was there, but it's been rediscovered. Now, through negotiations between the History Society, Council, and Bowood, it was agreed by all that it would be terrific to bring Robert Rose's headstone back to this cemetery and put it where his body has been for the last 160 years. So that's been done. Very thankful to council staff for helping with the heavy lifting of that. Very grateful to council and Peter and Phyllis McLennan for actually being able to identify the site of the body of Robert Rhodes and then working to actually reinstall the headstone. So that's the story of the Robert Rhodes headstone. It's back in its place where it was, the first ever burial in the cemetery. Does Jeff or anyone else want to say anything before I, before I hand over to Greg to say a few words? We're all good, Greg, over to you. Uh, thank you, Nigel. That's a fascinating story, to be honest. There's a, a lot in there that I didn't know, obviously. Um, highly appropriate, I suppose, that we gather here today to uh, to replace the headstone of the first resident, as you were, of the, of the Ellesmere Cemetery. And uh, as Nigel, you rightly said, there is um, a lot of history missing from this place. Um, we've replaced one little bit of it, and um, not only are there a lot of graves unidentified, but there are a lot that are unreadable, and thanks to the work of... Um, Peter and Phyllis McLennan, a lot of those um, headstones are now readable and um, that has um, added significantly to the history that is already known. So um, somewhere down the track hopefully we will be able to identify some of those missing um, headstones and graves. And I know for a fact that um, my brother is buried here, he's only a few days old when he died and um, my father took took me to the grave when I was five or six years old, but of course I can't remember exactly where he took me to. And um, so I know he's buried in the cemetery, but um, we don't know where it is. And we're assuming that it's in one of those um, babies' graves, you know, um, further over there. So, um, yeah, so great piece of history. It's good to see that the headstone's back here and, uh, and a job well done, Nigel and Peter and Phyllis um, and everyone involved. Thank you, Greg. What we might do now is ask everyone to move down this way a bit. We'll ask Leslie to stand behind the headstone and Peter will do the unveiling of it. And behind, Leslie, yep. we'll, we'll get a photograph of... Right, so everyone's ready. We now officially unveil the Robert Rhodes headstone. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> Jeff's got photographs. The advertiser's got photographs. We've got one more. Yep. Do you want to get in there as well? Can we get everyone around? Yeah, that'd if be everyone would be around, 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 around the back, yeah. then the advertiser can get photographs. <laughs> quickly. I don't want them to know it was that wet, do we? No. <laughs> so, well, Peter. Could yes. Jeff read what is actually on the headstone? Yes, Jeff. There's a fair bit missing, but I think Jeff has worked out yes. the gaps. 
in memory of Robert Rhodes, native of Philadelphia, USN, America, who died 1st of October 1863, aged 58 years. Dearly lamented. It's either dearly or deeply lamented. Yeah. We can't We've read the last the word. To work with. Yeah. The deeply lamented sounds pretty good. Deeply, which is definitely dear. It's a bit of yeah. Yeah. We've had brief discussions and decided to do absolutely nothing more with this headstone. We, we have talked about the possibility of putting a plaque up and telling this story yeah. so that people can Thank you to everyone.